Hi everyone, so excited for today because we have an amazingly special guest. This is Chef Ben from Maison Benjamin and he is not only one of the best chefs in the world, very smoky, heaven, right? yeah. gorgeous, but he also is a royal chef. Yeah. We're getting all the secrets today. <laughs> You just took salad making to the next level. It's gonna be a good day, good day, great day with Michael Meyer. So today we're going to hear tips, tricks. We're actually going to learn how to cook one of the Duchess of Cambridge's go-to meals. And on that note, welcome Chef Ben. Thank you for having me. So to start, can you tell us a little bit about your education? How do you, how does one become a royal chef? Well, it's all about the experience. I would say um, I traveled a lot uh, for work before, and then um, I was able to gain that experience uh, around the world. And then that's you know um, how I ended up in London. And London is a little bit of the center of the world, so um, that's how naturally I became um, a private chef for one of the royal family. That's so impressive, mm -hmm. incredibly. That's a dream job to any kind chef of. to have yes. on a resume, right? Yes. Chef, how many languages do you speak, and which ones are they? I speak three languages. Uh, my, um, I was you know, born in France, obviously I speak French, I speak English and Spanish. And what countries have you worked in? I worked in the States, in the UK, in Australia, in China, in Dubai, in Brazil a little bit as well. And wow. I'm working on the private yachts. I worked uh, all over the Mediterranean seas uh, with a lot of time in Greece, Spain, Italy, um, every country in the Mediterranean, as well as all the Caribbean as well. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. I mean, what a job. So, Chef Ben, I hear today we are cooking not only a royal household favorite, but something that's so easy, we can all even cook this at home ourselves. Is that right? Yes, definitely. It's very easy. And we are going to do a British roasted vegetable salad, which is very seasonal, uh, with uh, easy ingredients that we can find everywhere. So everyone can do it at home for sure. Okay, I'm ready. Let's get started. Yeah. So here we have our spring vegetables, which are uh, green asparagus, tricolor carrots, um, purple beetroots and fava beans. We are going to use with a base of spinach salad as well as a toasted pistachio. The British uh, blue cheese is called Stilton, very common in, the, in England. And we're going to top it up with some smoked paprika and honey mustard dressing. Now we know what we need to buy at the store, what do I do? So the first step is to first wash the vegetables, peel them, cut them and then we're going to roll into the oven and that's going to take about uh, 10 minutes for the asparagus and between 20 minutes and 40 minutes for the carrots and the beetroots so that will allow us to make the dressing in the meantime. Okay, great, I'm ready. So now we've washed our vegetables, yeah. now we're peeling them. Yes, yes. we're peeling them so they will be uh, going to go in the oven afterwards. So I'm going to peel them off and all of them and then we will we'll start the seasoning before we put it in the oven. So we oh, cut so them the in angle, is that? Yes. No, to give it like a, a prettier shape, I would say. So that's something we can all do at home to make our food look a little bit more. Yeah, elevated. attractive, yeah. I mean, I'm looking at this already and it's so colorful. Is that something when you are preparing meals for the Royals or any clientele, is that something that you always look at to make sure the color is so amazing? Yes, and even for, you know, uh, when I cook at home for my uh, wife and the kids, you know, it's like, you know, you want to make it pretty. If you have the chance to do it, you know, right. I'd rather go for it. So know? the presentation is, so yeah. is, is equally yeah. as important as how, how definitely, delicious. Yeah, definitely. So are there vegetables, are there favorite vegetables of the royal family? Yes, yeah, so because of the afternoon tea, we use a lot of cucumbers for the sandwiches. Uh, with mayonnaise and also, um, especially this time of the year, a lot of uh, peas. Ah, yeah, and uh, um, a lot of spinach as well. I'm always curious. You travel globally yes. for your clients. Yes. But what would you say portion size? Is it? <laughs> what are the portions like? Are they small? Or are they very tiny? Yeah, very small. Yes. Small. Yes, because there is so many meals throughout the day. There's always snacks, afternoon teas that they, when it comes to uh, main meals such as lunch and dinner, it's always on the light side. I would love to know because I think everybody out there who are royal fans watching, we always think of afternoon tea and yes. of course those amazing tea sandwiches. But I'm curious, what would you say are the most popular requests or the go-to tea sandwich fillings? Um, I would say the smoked salmon sandwiches. Ah. 
Ah. As well as the cucumber sandwiches and the egg sandwich. These are the three most popular sandwiches for afternoon tea. Okay, and do they put dill in their, um, the salmon one? Yes. They do. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> interesting. Yeah. We're getting all the secrets today <laughs> from Chef Ben. <laughs> so I noticed that you are leaving on the stems for the carrots and the beets. Why do we do that? To me, it's a more uh, respect of the products. So especially for the kids, if they see, they recognize the shape of the carrot with the stems. Otherwise, if there was no stems, they would say like, what, what's that? Yeah. <laughs> so so we, we want to keep the whole identity, identity of the vegetable. And would you say when you are cooking for a family meal, and mm -hmm. so that they're both children and adults enjoying the same meal, is there any variation for the children for the most part? Or do members of, of the royal family, do they eat everything and they don't adjust for the children? You, you serve them what everybody else eats. They don't get like a macaroni and cheese on the side. Because they used to go out Quite often, they have a lot of receptions, state dinners, that when it comes to uh, weekdays meals with the family, uh, we go into simple kind of food. It's like, you know, steamed vegetables, like a simple piece of uh, grilled fish. It's not too fancy, I would say. Interesting. Yeah. I feel like it's very yeah. cultural because yes. here in America, you often see different foods being served for children. And I love that yeah. about, really about Europe in general, right? Yes, that The yes. children kind of eat what, what the adults do. Yes. There's no kids menu. No. Okay, interesting, fun fact, there's no kids menu for the royal. Yes, yes. <laughs> Okay, so this looks so beautiful, almost be too beautiful to eat. It's so gorgeous. What is next? We've got this beautiful chopped, these vegetables. Where do we go from here? Yeah, so now what we're going to do, we're going to put them on a the tray. We're going to season them. Um, and we're going to drizzle with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. And then we're going to roast it in the oven at 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, and, and can you just tell me a little bit about the olive oil? So can, can you substitute vegetable oil or does it have to be olive oil? And if it is, how do we find the right olive oil? Um, it's, uh, I, again, I was born in Provence, so I was raised with uh, extra virgin olive oil. So I cannot do anything else than just, you know, <laughs> my, my own olive oil. So I always use uh, extra virgin olive oil. Um, so that's my to-go oil, definitely. And it has to be extra virgin? Yes, yes, yes. yes. What's the difference? more refined so um, it's better to use extra virgin olive oil okay. definitely Good. okay so now we're gonna take the cut asparagus we're gonna put it in one tray like this before we put the seasoning then we're gonna do the same thing with the beets we're gonna cut them in half again so it'll cook a little bit faster in the oven very important to leave the stems on and then same with the carrots so you want to split them lengthwise and then we're gonna do again in four again that's to gain time in the oven faster. So at any given occasion you could have, let's say if the royal family is hosting a 30 person dinner party, what is the chef to guest ratio? So the ratio is uh, more or less one chef for 10 guests. So looking at uh, okay. 30 people will at least three chefs. So okay, Mika, what is this now? So Mika, please smell this, you tell me. Yeah. Very smoky, heaven, right? Yeah. Smoked <laughs> yeah. heaven. So smoked paprika, yes. It's very flavorful and that's a, a great um, pairing with the vegetables. So first we're gonna sprinkle with the... Um, uh, oh, this is general. literally your own olive yeah, You, you yeah. said you use your own olive yeah, oil. Yeah. I didn't realize it's literally yes, yes, based yes. on Benjamin. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So first we wanna drizzle the vegetables. Then a little bit of salt. Same with the ground black pepper. So gentle because if you have kids at home, you know, it's yeah. always uh, sensitive the pepper. And then the smoked paprika for the smoky flavor. I never thought to put smoked paprika. That's I use a smoked secret paprika ingredient. everywhere. <laughs> now we want to do, we want to toss it up a little bit. Okay. That's all we do. So now we got our vegetables ready. What we're going to do, we're going to place them in the oven and cook them until they're like nice and tender. So on flight, so let's say there's a royal tour to Australia mm -hmm. and there's a very long flight from the UK and there are meals obviously during that time. Would you prepare the meals on the airplane or would those already be prepared by a different team? No, they prep ahead of time and everything gets transported by cooler and then they are the, the flight attendants, they uh, serve the meals, but it's already pre-made. Pre 
amazing. Mm -hmm. So here in the in the pot, we're gonna use a little bit of salt that's gonna help to first season the vegetables and as well it's gonna help the water to bring to bring the bowl faster. Yeah. Okay, so now we have our water boiling. So I'm gonna add um, the fava beans. We're gonna put them like this, and then we're gonna cook it for like 20 seconds. Okay, and chef, so you call them fava beans. Some people call them lima beans. Yes, right? so fava beans is more Italian uh, name for it. So in Europe, we use uh, fava beans, and especially in the British, uh, you know, uh, royalists, they use fava beans. beans. Yeah. It is. It's about 20 okay, seconds, yeah. so we're gonna strain it. And in the ice water. So that's gonna stop the cooking. Otherwise, it will carry on cooking if they were leave them um, at room temperature. Wow, so the fava beans, they were really only cooking for how long? Like 20 seconds. 20 seconds? Yeah. Can you tell me one example of the most off-the-wall request you have received? Yes, it was um, a meal at 2.45 in the morning, I think, after a long trip. So they came back and I was actually asleep and then I had to wake up and uh, do the meal for them. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yes, yeah. Okay, so you are, and... it's almost a 24-7 job sometimes. Yes, I mean, uh, that's why we, when we sign up for the job, we know what we're going through and then we have to be uh, there for them. Okay, chef, so now we are working on the dressing and yeah. I think that is something that I, I don't know a good, like, from scratch dressing. So I'm curious to know, what is the secret, and you're about to show us, what Kate eats? Yeah. Because everybody always wants to know. Mm -hmm. What do we have? So here we have um, a mustard, a Dijon mustard dressing. That's going to bring the flavor to the Stilton cheese as well. That's going to be a good uh, combination. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do from scratch a nice um, Dijon mustard dressing. But the worst thing to, uh, that makes you cry is the leeks. I don't know if you guys ever cut the leeks. The leeks are the worst for me, more than onions and shallots. So we're going to cut it in half. So we don't want to put too much because again, with the wires, they're very sensitive with the all garlic, shallots, onions, but just a little bit. Right, then next step will be the olive oil. So we need six tablespoons. That's six tablespoons. Then we got the red wine vinegar. So here we put three tablespoons of red wine vinegar. So two tablespoons of um, organic honey from upstate. A half a teaspoon. Then a quarter of a teaspoon of um, black pepper. So one and a half teaspoon. There we go. Now we have all the ingredients uh, ready in the bowl, so we're just gonna mix it. You see it's coming together now. So right now we're gonna turn those pistachio into like a golden color and uh, so that they will be um, a little bit more uh, crispy and also that can, that's gonna give them a nice color. I'm gonna put it in the pan. And now there's no olive oil or anything in here? No, no, no. So the type of pan we need is just like a coated one? Yeah, like a non-stick frying pan. Yeah. And now gently we're gonna toast them. Chef, I can smell this. I yep. wish you could smell this. The entire kitchen smells like roasted pistachios. Mm -hmm. And we didn't need olive oil. We didn't need anything to toss no, them in. Plain. And they just came out like this perfectly and added like a little golden texture. Yes, yes, yeah. And, and that's so now it. we're just chopping. Yes, yes. And then we will uh, sprinkle it over the, the salad once we're finished. That will be the last thing that's going to go on the plate. And that's going to uh, bring a new uh, nutty flavor into the salad. So Roasted asparagus. 
So again, by removing this from that tray, that's gonna um, 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 help the cooling. Otherwise, on that hot tray, that would be still cooking. So you're gonna take a little bit the blue part and yep. then you're gonna crumble it. Okay, how big do you want me to crumble it? Uh, pretty small if you can. Like yeah, that? this is perfect, perfect. So you don't ever want like the bigger pieces, crumbly pieces. Yes. What, what would you pair as a, um, as a beverage for this course? What kind of wine would you pair? So for this, I will see uh, a nice uh, refreshing light white wine, like from Roar Valley in France, like Sancerre oh, perhaps. Yeah. So right now we have a little bit of time. So what I'm doing is I'm peeling the, the fava beans to uh, remove that uh, thin layer of skin that they have. That's gonna be a little bit more pleasant in the mouth when you eat it, when you bite on it. So it's a, you know, it's a little plus. So Chef Ben, is this the most labor intensive part of this meal you'd say? Yes, it takes a while to peel them off, yes. But otherwise, it's pretty, it's a pretty easy meal. Yeah, it's very easy. Now these fava beans, can you buy them with the skin already off or would you not recommend that? You could, but uh, it's always, they're probably going to come frozen, so it's better to use uh, fresh ones. But then you have to remove the, the peel, yes. So when you're cooking for the royals, you always cook fresh. You don't really use frozen foods. No. So we're going to throw the spinach in the bowl. Yeah. We're going to put half of the fava beans. We always keep um, some vegetables for the decoration on top. We're going to add the dressing with a pair of tongs to toss it. A little of salt, a bit of pepper, some asparagus, some carrots, and the color. So Chef Ben, we are now down to the plating part. And you told me that plating is just as important as the process and the taste and the presentation. So what, are, what secrets do you have about presentation when it comes to plating? Well, when I go and source the products, I always think about the colors because the colors are obviously the visual and that's the first uh, introduction to the dish before you even go to the uh, tasting. So it's like a house, you know, before you go inside, you sit outside, you say, oh, it's nice. <laughs> yeah. you know, so this is yes. Thing, you know? And I like your tip that you said earlier about always save some of the vegetables yes, and everything yeah. for the top, right? Yes, yes. I think that's a mistake I make. I think. I, I usually just throw it all in there and I don't leave the garnish, but you're right. It makes it so much more beautiful. So here we have the fava beans on top as well as in the mix with the spinach salad on the bottom that you don't see, but you will feel it when, as you go and bite it. Gorgeous. You just took salad making to the next level. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's safe to say. So right now I'm gonna add a little more dressing. All right, so now what is this you're putting on so the top? Those are micro herbs called bull's broad, and it brings the, the color as well as a, a nutty flavor from the taste. That's beautiful. Right, then we can please sprinkle some uh, special. Okay, so just a little handful? Okay. Like that? Yeah. Ooh, this is fun. And then, as always, I want to finish up my dishes with uh, extra virgin olive oil. Oh, it makes it like glisten. Yes. <gasps> Shiny. It makes it glisten. It's like gold. There's liquid gold. I love it. So here we have our spring, uh, British spring, also vegetable salad. Chef Ben, it was such an honor to have you here today. Uh, you know, I have a couple questions. I hope you don't mind. I no, think go everyone ahead. out there is going to be really yeah. curious about these two. How far in advance are you preparing these menus? Usually it's about two weeks in advance because everything, because of the protocols, everything has to be um, under control. So it has to be approved by the uh, wireless and then um, everything has to be prepared in advance and they don't want any surprise basically. So everything is very much under control from two weeks in advance. Wow, thank you for revealing all these amazing tips and mm -hmm. secrets. So Chef Ben, if somebody wants, somebody sees this today and they want a royal chef to come to their home, their dinner party, their wedding, where do they find you? So they can find us on uh, MaisonBenjamin.com. We have a website and um, we have all the information about how to um, 
get our services and then we will um, accept any request as much as we can um, do it and uh, we can do any uh, customized menu as you like uh, we're very down uh, to uh, one to one so uh, there is no set menu in advance it's really up to the, the clients really okay the moment we've all been waiting for tasting chef ben's creation i feel a, 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 like a, a duchess i don't know about you all tasting this but um let's see all right i'm gonna go for a beat mm. this is amazing this is so flavorful and it's so colorful my mouth is watering this is so fantastic i wish i could throw it through the phone so all of you could taste it this is amazing and on that note, make sure you follow Chef Ben at MaisonBenjamin.com and his Instagram handle right here. That was so enlightening, so exciting. I know what I'm making tonight. Make sure to like this, share this with anybody who might be interested. And thank you so much for tuning in today. Remember, Chef Ben, check him out below. Thank you so much for joining.